Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Something Something Podcast and Smells Like Teen Horror. And with me, as always, is Larry Sands. How's it going, Larry? Everything is great, man. The birds are singing, the sun is out, or the moon, whenever you're listening to this. But no, it's great. How are you doing? Doing good, man. The weather is great here in Jersey. It is about 63 degrees. And Larry, something amazing is happening on Friday. Okay. The 10th Fast and the Furious movie is coming out. <laughs> now, yes. I've only seen one of them. Well, I saw the a little bit of the first one, but I saw seven because James Wan directed it, and he's one of my favorite directors, but I want to see... Which number seven? Is that the one with Rock and Jason Sam? I, I don't know, man. I don't okay. remember. I okay. honest, I wish I did, but... <laughs> <laughs> so starting tonight until Saturday, I am going to marathon every single Fast and the Furious movie <laughs> just so I can go in on Saturday and experience this. Um, <laughs> with fresh eyes. <laughs> with fresh eyes, yeah. I mean, I love Axe Body Spray, and I know there is going to be a large amount of Axe Body Spray in there and a lot of dude bros. But, Larry, franchises are very important to me yeah. when it comes to movies, Yes, particularly the horror franchise. I mean, anybody watching this on the YouTube can see all the movie posters. Uh, two years ago, my favorite horror franchise, favorite film franchise, rebooted with Scream 5, a.k.a. Scream, a.k.a. Scream 2022. And I wanted to be up to date on it because there were so many cool viral marketing things. And I stumbled upon these YouTubers that, to my shock, were all friends. Mm-hmm. called the lethal collective we had steven from craving something scary on and my goal mm-hmm. is to get them all on and right now i think we have the youngest member of that crew um kill joy jake how's it going jake it's going good how are you guys doing doing, doing good great man again thank you so much for coming on i've been like i said i've been trying to get you on for a while but you know, scheduling and living life is always hard. <laughs> it is. It's very hard. <laughs> yeah. So, Jake, tell everybody really quick about your channel, how it started. And, you know, we're going to put all your links for the gaming stuff and all of that in the description. Oh, fantastic, man. Yeah. I uh, So I, I started my channel back in like 2019, just talking about uh, various different horror movies, including Scream. Um, and then we got the announcement that Scream 2022 was coming out and a lot of people seem to like the updates on that. And that's kind of been the main focus of my page uh, just for the past like three, three and a half years now. Um, it, it's been a fun time. You know, I just do do little horror updates on a bunch of different movies. Uh, Scream is obviously a big focus, but I also love talking about like the new Five Nights at Freddy's movie coming out, Saw X, bunch of other good stuff coming out uh, this year. So it's it's been a blast. These past three and a half years have truly been a blessing for me. It's been a really good time. Yeah, because your channel has really blown up in this time. I mean, it's what you're doing pretty much full time now, right? Yeah, yeah, we're I'm, I'm doing it full time. I, I run that channel in a gaming channel as well. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun, but it's a lot of work. <laughs> People don't realize they they try to mock it and go YouTube's not a real job, but it really is, especially what what you're doing with movie news because <clears throat> within horror, something happens every day. Like your live stream yesterday during it, the Five Nights at Freddy's teaser trailer drops out of nowhere and. Just so you know, you're not alone in that question mark not being there. It is infuriating <laughs> that there's no question mark. Can you survive Five Nights at Freddy's? I I would answer if it was a question, you know? So, <laughs> Larry, there was this game that came out about 10 years ago. They did like five of them in two years called Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I, yeah, the, I know, I know, I know. Five Nights at Freddy's. So the poster for the movie dropped yesterday, and the teaser trailer, and 
above the poster it says can you survive five nights at freddy's but there's no question mark <laughs> it's like that the marketing department forget to put the question mark on right. photoshop and it just got sent out <laughs> I was being a little nitpicky with that tweet. I got to be honest, but but it's it, like my OCD. Not. It bugs me just a little bit. I was like, oh, come on. <laughs> there should be something in there. <laughs> but it's not nitpicky is the thing. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So let's get to the beginning. When did your love for horror start? So I was shown horror movies at a way too young age. Like I was watching Eight Legged Freaks with David Arquette when I was like pretty awesome. much five years old. Uh, you know, it's it's a goofy movie. We can watch it as a, as adults and not be terrified of it. But, you know, little five year old Jake running around still in the diaper pretty much was was crap in his pants. I <laughs> I thought it was awesome. You know, I, I love that. I love the feeling of being scared. And I was drawn to more and more movies like that. Like I slowly got into Scream a little more. Um uh, I'm trying to think of like other ones. Uh, Sam Raimi's Drag Me to Hell was one I saw way too early awesome. too. Wow. Great movie, but I just saw it at a young age. And I, you know, going through high school and middle school, I, I kind of got away from movies. I was, I tried to be a little more social and all that. But back in like 2018, I saw Hereditary and like Halloween. Like that year was killer for horror. And it just re-inspired my, my love for, for this uh, subgenre. And it's, it's fantastic. It's a, uh, I don't know. I just, I got really into it again. And a year later I had to start a channel just talking about it. So it was, it's been a, it's been so much fun. I've had this weird relationship with horror my whole life and I've been very bad and forth with it but now it's like i'm full steam ahead horror fan just going to cons watching all the new movies it's it's so much fun it's a, it's a great community to, to be a part of you know it really is it's one of the most welcoming commun communities i mean yeah as we learned in scream five there is a very toxic nasty side but i've noticed that's the minority because it's like we're the weird kids table at lunch <laughs> yes it's like i always feel like within when you work in the industry as you are and you you're gonna make some great original stuff it's like the jocks are the marvel and fast and the furious movies <laughs> the dramas are like the drama kids the comedy kids they can go back and forth with the horror and you know big genre guys but we're the island of misfit toys when it comes to genre fans. <laughs> it, it's true. You know, it's it, it's true. A lot of us are, you know, we, you don't uh, horror movies don't get recognized at award shows. You know, rarely it happens. Uh, all of us were just celebrating because Scream 6 won two MTV movie awards. But like, it's not, you know, it's not that big of a deal, unfortunately, which is a shame. Uh, Scream, Scream 6 and uh, like Infinity Pool, all these movies from this year, I, I wish they could get like Oscar nominated. It, it's, it's it's a shame. We're, we're rarely recognized. And I think for that reason, you have the misfits drawn to this genre. But it's it's kind of a wonderful thing in a weird way. Like you said, you know, it's it really is just a small vocal minority that is the toxic part of it, unlike other fandoms out there. So it's it's wonderful to be a part of this. There, there's a lot of wonderful people that I've met just in the past three years, like so it's countless people that are just yeah. so much fun to, to be around and talk to i got a quick question for both you guys because it's such a, a wide net right a wide genre is it is it is that the reason it's so welcoming is because there's so many aspects and so many genres of horror that you get all these kind of people and it's just kind of like ah, oh, cool man and that's they just kind of go with it that's a great question. I, I I think, yeah, I think, yes. Like there's so much weird stuff that happens at movies in, in these movies in particular that it's like you, you have to, not everyone's going to like that. Not everyone's going to be a fan of it, but if you do, you, you obsess over it. Like I remember yes. VHS 94 just from a couple of years ago has this giant rat monster in there. And I just thought that was the funniest, most disgusting looking monster. And I just, I was obsessed with it for like a couple of months and I would post pictures of it. People would send me messages like, why are you posting that on Instagram? That's disgusting. I'm like, it's hilarious. It's a big old rat monster. It's got black goo coming out of its mouth. Come on. So I, I, I love that. I'm drawn to the weird, to weird stuff like that. Cause if you're going to watch a drama or like a, an Adam Sandler comedy, you know, you're not going to get something like that. You know, right. and th this is the only uh, genre of movies that where you can find weird stories like that about weird creatures or people losing their minds and killing people. It's, it, right. it's a wonderful, it, it's, it sounds horrible, but it is a wonderful thing. Yeah, no, no, I get it. And you know, when you, when you really think about it, 
how how big and wide the genre really is. I I don't let me ask you this. I was gonna say something, but another thing popped into my head. When when you watch horror films, is there anything that could be too out of too wild for a horror film and for your for your horror like aspectedness? Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I get what you're saying. There, there's a line you have to tiptoe. You know what I mean? Because like giant rat monsters are really cool, but then you know right. there's, a, you know, you can have an aggressive scene of you know someone getting assaulted or something where it's just right. maybe it comes off as distasteful. The the point of a horror movie should be to entertain by showing you something so ridiculous and so abnormal that you just wouldn't get in another movie. And just to go that route of like just uh, being too realistic, you know, being yeah. too close to the source <clears throat> material, you have to deviate a little bit you know what i mean uh mm -hmm. wes craven said something to the degree of like we make you know horror films we make fict fictitious movies not documentaries right. uh you, you have to find the the difference between those two things otherwise yeah you're just making a documentary about real life and it's not as interesting have the relatability but don't make it too real if that makes yeah. sense yeah and 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 how do you feel about because horror i think obviously it, I and I guess it is different in the eighties, the seventies, the eighties, the nineties. You have these; it's still horror, but you still have like the campiness of it all, right? You have like the Jason who's super. I mean, he went to space, right? <laughs> and <laughs> and you have aspects of that, but then you look at like hereditary, uh, heredity, right? Yeah, hereditary. Yeah, and, from, yeah. yeah, yeah, hereditary, and then uh, all the A twenty four movies. <laughs> Um, uh, you, you look at those and you go, whoa, those are a little bit too real, right? Or no, it, cause I know, I know there's a lot of people now that are used to that, but I think when you grow up with the campiness and the aspect of it being so over the top, um, I, what, what do you think about the, the horror movies now with them taking themselves so seriously and talking about, is it a, a talk on society, you think? Yeah, I definitely think so. I think like hereditary movies like hereditary, uh, even like Midsummer and all that, you know, they, they have commentary. They, they have something to say. You know what I mean? They, yeah. they're, they're trying to they are trying to say something. And yes, maybe sometimes they are taking themselves too seriously. Like I think <laughs> men from last year is a perfect example of that, where it's like this was a cool concept. I get what you're trying to say, but I feel like you might have gotten a little too preachy with it. You know, there's with just with the whole relatability thing, applying that to this, too. You have to know when to get off your soapbox, I think, when you're writing a movie. You, you have to know like when you want to get a, get a point across, do it, do it effectively. But you, you can't just keep shoving it down my throat the whole movie. If that's what your right. whole movie is, you, you've made a mistake. I think George Romero, surprisingly, of all people, does social commentary really well. It's yeah. it's just a little little nugget of information <laughs> in his movies usually. Just a little something, something. In Dawn of the Dead, there's a few throwaway lines that are crazy social commentary and super thought-provoking, but you might you might miss them. And I, right. I love that. I, I kind of yeah. love that about the way that he writes his movies. It's not the focal point, but it's there and it's present. I right. think that to me, that's the best way to do social commentary. Where it's it is there, but maybe it's not like the entire focus of it. You know, right. we come to yeah. movies to be entertained first yeah. and foremost get away from the real world yeah <clears throat> not not exactly. step inside somebody's real world and go oh my god <clears throat> what am i doing here yeah yeah i think the great thing about horror overall like i'll use this example a movie like again even though like anyone who watched our promotions for hillsborough road knows i'm not an a24 fan <laughs> but here's the great thing about horror hereditary is a masterpiece but so is Sleepaway Camp 2. That's <laughs> yeah. also a yeah. masterpiece. And no other genre, a bad movie, can be considered. Hold on. Yeah. No, I, and I, I agree with Eric because, again, that speaks to how big and how broad and how far-reaching horror really can be. Right. Because obviously you look at <laughs> sleepaway camp and you're like, oh, my God. And then you look at um, heredity. Right. Or her I always forget. However it, it is, you say it, it. it still <laughs> freaks me out. So I, I, I saw I've seen Midsommar, which I, I could barely talk. We did a, a podcast on I, I my mind was blown. Yeah. 
the whole night after watching it. But you you do. I mean, and that's the I think that's the broad scope and and how good really, whether it be campy or social commentary, how good it really can be, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And look at, I mean, sleepaway camp, I think is a great example, you know, like something like hereditary is so, you know, it's very intricate. Like every shot of that was planned out to a, to a T perfectly. I don't know if that was the case with sleepaway camp, but it's (laughs) still wonderful and it's still a really fun movie and it still elicits an emotion or makes you think about something. You know what I mean? That final Mm -hmm. shot of the original sleepaway camp is so thought provoking. It's so interesting. It's like, what? Like this right. is what was going on the whole time. It's you want that. You want to to breed conversation from your movie. You don't want to just be like, okay, we just watched some pictures fly across the screen and now we're leaving the theater. You know what I mean? Like right. horror always can incite a crazy conversation afterwards, whether oh, yeah. that's about philosophy or uh, just like maybe a social political thing, whatever, or just crazy person running around with a knife killing people. Was that the right decision? Like, why did they fall down that path? There's an endless conversation with good horror films, I think. That's the difference between the good ones and the bad ones. Agreed. Agreed. Um, uh, Talk a little bit, because I would like to, because every every kid I know now, I I, I ask them, and even Harper, uh, uh, Eric, uh, my little niece, she's seven, She's like, she started her uh, YouTube channel and we just filmed like, cause she has, she loves Pokemon cards and stuff and little things, but every kid you talk to now, they want a YouTube channel. And, you know, I, I absolutely understand. And to, to Eric's point, even to your point is it's hard to do an upkeep of a YouTube channel. Um, Heck, it's just hard trying to get, stuff for the the podcast put together right yeah. because it's so busy talk about the the reality of it because now we're kind of switching and going to like the back end the business really of your channel and and how what that looks like because i want people to to understand because again they they watch a YouTube show and they go, oh, I want to do that. But they don't really understand what goes into what you do. I, you're spot on. I mean, with the whole business and like work ethic element to it, it's it's a lot tougher because when you have a when you have a day job, you know, and you have a boss, you have someone to to look not only look up to, but to like essentially work for. Yeah. There's this pressure that's put on you. You know what I mean? And you don't have that at first with a self with a self-employment gig you know like i have to you know i have to wake up every morning and i have to do stuff you know like it's that some people don't some people think i just sit around here and smoke pot all day and (laughs) and talk about horror movies oh wait a minute you You don't don't? (laughs) i I won't you know i won't confirm or deny anything that's that's all i'm gonna say but uh, (laughs) what i will say is it's it, it you have to have that um you have to have that drive. You have to have that drive to want to do it because with, with work or, you know, going to a job or whatever, you have like a boss you have to, you have to work for, you know what I mean? You have to get stuff done by a certain time or you're going to get in trouble. You're going to get fired. You have that pressure on you. You don't really feel that at first with, with something like a YouTube channel, you can stop doing it and keep working at Chipotle or whatever, and just keep making money with, with this, you have to have that drive to want to do it. I know a lot of people who love the idea of having a YouTube channel. They're yeah. in love with that, but yeah. they're not in love with the actual process of it. Like it's uh-huh. it's not going to happen overnight anymore. Like this, it's no longer 2006 anymore where you can just press a button a hundred times and get people to watch your, watch your shit. That just doesn't, yeah. it just doesn't work like that anymore. You have to constantly be uploading. You have to constantly be looking at what what's the trending topic right now. What's something we can talk about that my audience would be interested in and also something you would be interested in. Don't just talk about something if it's trending. If right. you have no interest, you know, you're not going to, that's going to show, you know, you have to have yeah. that passion. Yeah. It, yeah. It's like, in total though, but basically in conclusion, it's just a lot to balance. It's a lot to balance and you have to be able to put in that work or it's just not going to happen. You know, I yeah. mean, that's the best advice I can give to somebody who wants to start a YouTube channel. Do you like ask yourself this question? Do you love the idea of you having a YouTube channel or do you love the process of making videos and uploading ah. them and responding to comments? You, you have to ask yourself that because that, that's going to be the determining factor, in my opinion. Right, right. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, and that, that goes for filmmaking and acting as well. Everybody loves the they they look and see it they go man i want to do that and then you get into it and you're like 
but Entertainment Tonight said it was so easy to be an actor <laughs> or filmmaker. <laughs> and, you know, and but I again, I think, you know, much like horror speaks to the different, you know, things and possibilities that lie out there in genre and the different aspects. I think you look at the like the reality TV and everybody wants to be in a rea reality TV, but they don't know what goes into it. And, and, exactly. and, and you have to be, you really have to be a self-starter because at some point it's no longer, you know, Hey, this is a fun thing. It's like, Hey, it, it becomes a job, a job that you like, but it's still a thing you have to do. Yeah. It's, it's like an in-between, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's not even, yeah. I don't, I, I don't, it's weird. Cause like calling it a job and has a negative connotation. Yes, it does. It, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. but, but I love doing this. I wake up every morning, exactly. super hyped to make a new video on whatever the fuck is going on. You know what yeah, I mean? Like it's, yeah. it is wonderful. I, I love every second of what I do, but at the same time, you have to understand that it is a bit, there's a bit of work. You know, I have to spend two hours editing the video after mm -hmm. I just went on a crazy rant. You know, right. I have to cut out the stupid parts right. <laughs> and leave right. in the smart part, the right. smart parts. You know what I mean? You get, yeah. you have to be able to do that. You have to be able to put in that work every single day or it's just not going to happen. You know, YouTube yeah. is a, it, it's become very saturated since its inception and or conception, I guess. But you to to balance that to once again get through that. You just have to be better than not not better than everybody else, but just more just as efficient. You know what I mean? It's not a competition on YouTube, but it is it is a saturated market at the same time. You still have right. to be able to produce content just as much as the next guy, or right. it's not gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, you've put in like you you're basically saying you gotta put in the work. It's like if you wanna be an athlete. And playing the NFL, you don't just show up. That's a <laughs> lifetime commitment from the age you're 12. It's working out every day, but you you're working out and you know, doing that is reading what's happening now, keeping up with trends and stuff like that. You, again, you don't just hit record, you've got to plan out your video and then the editing, mm, which no yeah. one ever thinks about how hard it is to edit movies videos it's the most rewarding but mind-numbing and <laughs> soul crushing yeah. of all the arts it, it really <laughs> it, it really can be and I, I think there's a lot of and you know I, I'm harping on this so much because there is a stigma about it there is a stigma about YouTube where it's like oh you know people just you know, losers do that who who don't right. want to work you know what I mean yeah. but it's so not the truth like the people yeah. who are successful on this planet are some of the hardest working people alive in my opinion like and mm -hmm. I, you know there are some people out there where it's like this you know this oh this this sucks or whatever like this is I hate this kind of content this is like you're fueling you're you're fueling hate and those but those channels succeed still somehow I don't I'm not necessarily a a, a fan of those pages but they succeed because those are hardworking people that doesn't mean your morals are in check that doesn't mean your or, you know, whatever, but it does mean you're a hard worker. And that's, yeah. that is the one constant I've seen across every single YouTube page that is successful is that there are people behind them that are constantly putting in something every day towards it. Th that's why I, I, I know I'm hard. Once again, I feel like I'm repeating myself so much, but it's so important that you, if you have no other factor to your personality, if you want to be a YouTuber, be a hard worker. That's the, the yeah. absolute number one mm -hmm. thing I think. Mm -hmm. And, but also that speaks to like your creativity and your drive and determination because because I uh, obviously I, I think people don't quite understand that you still have to go once you shoot it, you have to go through it and edit it. But the the stuff that you do, it just makes it all the more better. And and yes, you are absolutely right about like. You have to really be like the hardest working person in the room, right, or in in the YouTube space, because because it's so readily available having a camera and you can get lighting and stuff, which is great. But now, now that everybody has access to it, everybody thinks they want to do it, but then they're like, Oh, but now I got to set up my lights and I got to do oh. this. And by the time that lunch is ready and then I <laughs> eat and then I'm tired, I want to take a nap. And then I, I got to do lights. And it's just, you know, th th I think that's the thing is it comes down to self-determination uh, and, and the want to, to want to do it. So that speaks a lot to, to your character and, and your creativity. So that's cool.
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very so cool. what are some of your favorite videos to do? Because I know I dug the vlogs you were doing yeah. on different locations. What are the ones that get you the most excited? Oh, man. I mean, those were a lot of fun. I, I They were just expensive. Yeah. <laughs> they were very expensive and they didn't. Uh, they, hilariously enough, they didn't do as well as just me doing an update on a new movie. Like it's like I'm, I'm here at the Dawn of the Dead Mall. You know, I drove yeah, all the way yeah. to Monroeville, Pennsylvania to do this video. And, and that doesn't do as well as a Scream 6 update, which is wow. it, it's a little wild to me. You know, you would think that would do that would do better. But wow. um, I, I love doing I, I absolutely love doing those videos. And at my what I'm doing right now, my two series is like updates on the bigger horror movies. And then I'll focus an entire video just on some of the smaller ones, like just in everything we know about whatever. Like I just put out one about the boogeyman this week, that new mm -hmm. movie that comes out in like a couple weeks. I love doing those because I, there's a lot of people that will have movies fly over and they won't even realize that they came and went. And it's like, well, hang on, you know, we're all, listen, we're all excited for the exorcist and five nights at Freddy's at the end of the year, saw X, whatever. But did you know that this movie called talk to me comes out in a couple of weeks? Right. Like that looks pretty good. Uh, the yeah. boogeyman I'm kind of interested in. I, I kind of want to, I, I like having uh, a, a series on the page where it's like shedding light on some of the weirder things that, like that. people don't yeah. talk about as much. That's a big focus for my page. Uh, especially I will talk about the big stuff, obviously like, you know, scream and Halloween, all that is, is a big focus too, but uh, it's it's very important to me that some of these other undercover movies get some light shed on them. That's very cool. I like that. I like I like that you're that that's like your passion to to bring those smaller because and and I say smaller, you know, the the less recognized um, movies that are coming out and the more obscure because. I, I think, you know, much like what we've talked about, different strokes, different folks, right? And there's always, I think, in horror, a, the, a genre, like a subcategory in horror that people are going to go, oh, yeah, I kind of like that, right? Right. And, and, and to be able to bring that to people's attentions, I know that, like, being, being having you said, say, uh, saying that, it just means that you really are a fan of of horror and and the concept of what it takes to put things out whether it be a big big release or a smaller you know the smaller releases is you give them equal uh equal time and equal passion and and that speaks again I'm telling you, man, just meeting you. And it's so weird because YouTube is like this because you watch something on YouTube and then we get to talk to somebody. I'm thinking to myself, oh, my God, that's the guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went through that when we interviewed um, The Haunting of Sunshine Girl, who's oh, this yeah. YouTuber I've been a fan of for years. She's put out books and stuff like that. When we finally got her on, I wanted to refer to her by her character name. I was like, no, no, her real name is Paige. Make sure you call her that. <laughs> My real name is Alfonso. I don't know if you guys know that. Okay. Is it really? No, no, well, it's not. <laughs> so do a lot of people with your name always ask if you're a fan of the kill? You're like a big fan of the Killjoy movies? <laughs> yeah, yeah I, so I was completely unaware that those movies existed. Really? There's yeah. like seven of them. <laughs> I, yeah, there's like, there's a bunch of them. It's a, like, I actually bought the box set, like oh, as a joke, man. like I put it on my set. I I still haven't seen them. I <laughs> I still have never watched them, but I, I actually, I do get that question quite a lot. They're like, oh, you must be a fan. This is an obscure <laughs> reference, right? And I'm like, awesome. yeah, yes. it definitely is. Uh huh. <laughs> the first one is pretty good. I, the second one is awful. And after that, I gave up. I love Full Moon. <laughs> I think they make some of the coolest you know write the video movies oh yeah oh dude for sure man like uh puppet master obviously puppet master yeah demonic toys like those, yes. those are fun movies man they're great do you do you ever get a chance um because i know you're growing right have have people hit you up from the movies that you like talk about and mention, do they, do they ever want to, to come on and talk to you or be on the show? I know that's a weird question. 
I I have hmm, this is this is it's a weird question. I'm I want to like I want to have people on the channel like and I want to talk to them because like there's so many people I I got to meet at like horror cons and stuff which was awesome. Um, but like the, the I think the best example is like the Terrifier people like from uh, who made like Terrifier Terrifier two. I was covering that relentlessly. Like I was super excited for it. And I actually had like a couple of them reach out to me, like on Instagram, Ooh. Damien Leone, the director, oh. writer, director, makeup, all that. He, he messaged me and was like, was like, dude, thank you so much. You know, like, thank you for covering. Like no one's talking about our movie. And I'm just wow. like, that's a shame. Like, I think the first one was a, it was a kind of a sleeper hit came on the Netflix. That's how people found out about it a yeah. little more. And when I found out a sequel was happening, I'm like, yeah, Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I thought that was just so cool. And I got to meet him uh, for the first time in person just a, a month ago now. And like, I literally walked up to the booth and he's like, Jake, no way. And he oh, got wow. up and like gave me a hug. It, it was the cool, like, honest to God, one of the coolest mo moments of my entire life. I thought that That's was awesome. awesome. Like I That's have nothing cool. but respect for him. And I just, I thought that was so cool. I would love to have him on the page. I've just, I haven't quite gotten into that that mode yet like interviewer mode um i want to though i don't even I, it's not even like i'm nervous or something i just i need to i just need to pull the trigger you know and right, just start right, sending some right. emails out seeing what yeah. who i can get on the channel um craven something scary like you were mentioning earlier he does that all the time and i think it's awesome like those are my that's yeah. my favorite thing that he does uh i would love to do something like that he's getting a lot of pretty cool people on too just recently that's yeah, cool. like uh, obscure people too. Like the 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 person who did the voice from um like the t Scream TV show. Like I had no idea who that even was before that before that yeah. interview. I'm like, that's so cool. Like I want to start doing I want to start doing something like that. Like he if you know if he's pulling people like that, who knows? You know who who else can I get on the on the show? That'd be cool. That's so sure cool. you're gonna get the Terrifier people before three comes out, man. That's a guarantee. I know it. Oh yeah, that would be awesome. You know that would that would be the dream. <laughs> <laughs> it, it it is kind of it, it or it has to be a little odd in a way to to start out where really it's just you, you know, talking to the camera and stuff. But then to add like another person, I would think it would be, you know, a little uh, discombobulating, I think, you know, and, and it is I mean, you know, there there's sometimes where like I'm not available or Eric's not available and. You know, we just kind of just kind of roll with it. But then it feels like it's like a missing limb <laughs> in a way. <laughs> so, right. so uh, but very interesting. Very interesting. Um, what what would you say? Because I, I like the I like the idea of introducing, you know, um, much like like what, what I like about our guests, obviously, is we have a chance to to hear their story and get what they do. But even just to like, like introduce to like an audience or throw out like an idea, much like, you know, like having people come on, right? And you're not opposed to that. And I think that's super cool. And so if somebody's out there, they go, oh, well, I should finish and then ask you. So somebody is out there, they have like a horror movie that they shouldn't be like ashamed or nervous to reach out to you. Right. Yeah. Oh my God. Like I would, <laughs> I would have any, anybody who, if you've made a horror movie, yeah, I'll have you on. Oh my God. That's, that's awesome. Oh, wait I'll a minute. Go. I know two guys. So near, near the end of this year, <laughs> you'll be getting a free DVD of a movie called Hillsborough road. Oh, well, shit. <laughs> Shameless <laughs> plug. Shameless no, no, I'll plug. definitely send you a copy yeah. of the yeah. movie we made for sure, man. Yeah, yeah dude. Oh, my God. That, yeah. that would be awesome. Yeah. 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 Well, very speaking cool. of filmmaking, um, you made a very cool Scream fan. Well, a stab fan film, if I'm going to be <laughs> accurate, called Red Right Hand. Tell us about that. Oh my God. It was, uh, it's so much fun. Just such a, such a fun experience. It, it, you know, we, we set out to make a full length movie with $5,000, which is not an easy task. I don't recommend other people do that. We, we should have just committed to a short film, but I was, I got ambitious. I got excited. Yeah, can, we, I, we... can I say something? You did yeah, the right yeah. thing, man. Um, yeah. I'm not just saying this as a fan. I'm saying this filmmaker, it's a filmmaker. Doing the short would have been the easy thing. You challenged yourself, and there are a lot of other people out there who want to make movies but don't have the the balls 
to make a feature film for $5,000. You could have done a great short, but no, you made a really great feature. You, you, you know, you, you live life without a net when you do something like that, you know, and look, it's, it's gone beyond your audience to people you don't know. Like again, that before the show, I, I sent you a, a screenshot of this scream Facebook page. It's like, Hey, there's this cool scream fan film you should check out. So you did the right thing. Oh, yeah. 100%. Never doubt yourself about yeah. that. Well, well, thank you so much, Eric. That, that does mean that, that means a lot. I, we, we wanted to, we, we just wanted to bring something really impressive to the table. You know, I I've seen a lot of scream fan films that kick ass and we wanted to do something like just, just weirder and different. And we just, there was no way we could do that in 20 minutes. You know what I mean? We had yeah. to do it in a, in a feat, at least feature length. And we, I don't know, we were just super, pa we were super passionate about the idea. Me and uh, Matt, the co-writer and director, we've, we've always wanted to see Scream from the perspective of Ghostface. Like I'm obsessed with the Ghostface killers. I think they're just so interesting. And to see what a, one of those movies is like from their perspective the whole time where you're following them, what is that like? You know, we wanted to answer that question with, with that movie and we definitely got weird with it and, <laughs> I th nice. and I'm proud of it. I'm happy with it. I think it's fun. What was cool is there's even some experimental kind of film stuff with the dream sequence that your character has, which was really blowing my mind when it happened. Cause it's like, you're getting a slasher movie, which is my favorite genre of films. But then there's this trippy, like, a24 type of thing that happens to and i that blew my mind when i saw it and well we'll get into the scream six stuff in a little bit what happened during that but you were able to merge like in a little found footage too it was like a a buffet if you would of horror movies with red right hand we we tried to jam pack like everything we love about horror all into the movie. You know, we it, it felt appropriate with a scream fan film, and you know, you you're literally following a character who is criticizing horror movies along the way. It it just felt right. You know what I mean? It felt right to pack all these things we love about other movies into this one. Like there's the, yeah an entire sequence that is just an American Psycho reference. There's yeah. the dream sequence, like you said, it's very very artsy, very experimental feel, and then there's found footage elements too. It's it's a uh, it, it's chaotic. It's just as chaotic as your main character character is how I wanted the the style and tone of it to feel I guess and I think we did that successfully but I once again I, I wish we could have I wish we had a little, just a little more money to play around with and make it even make, make it even crazier we, we're thinking about working on a remaster at some Ooh. point in the future but um be awesome Ooh. oh yeah I you know I I can always tell you that no matter uh -huh. <laughs> No matter if you had a million dollars, you go, man, if we had just a little bit more money, <laughs> I, I, cause I, I think, you know, for, and it's, it's always like that. It's not like a, a bad thing at all, but I think it's always, I think it will always be like that because when it's done and when you look at it and you're like, oh man, we should have, we should have done this. Or if we just had one more day right or yeah. another hour to the day feel better about you know you made a cool movie with five grand this idiot made a movie set in the 80s for a little over ten thousand dollars not a smart move when you're doing that you know so you went a more practical route than we did i, I bet it kicks ass i haven't seen it yet but i bet it's awesome I'm, I'm happy with it is what i can say most even though it's weird because then not 96 to 2012 is my favorite era of horror the the kevin williamson era as i call it <laughs> i love 80s stuff but that's you know i said it in the 80s because it's the only way that story would work is if it's set in the 80s now are you i know you've hinted at it but are you working on anything original right now or anything new that you can give us a, a sampling of what what I can tell you is we are working on an original movie right now, and we're we're currently we're we're kind of getting past the pre production phase, and we're like we have a script, we're like things are storyboarded, a lot of a lot of work has already gone into it, um, and we're we're like pitching it right now to uh, some different different people around, um, we're we're gonna try to finance it like on an indie scale and all that, but the the big thing I can tell you is it's a horror anthology movie, but it's got a it's got a bit of a twist to it where we're doing a spin on the the format, so I can't. I can't say too much about it yet, but I'm I'm very I'm I'm so excited for it. Like I think it's even better than Red Right Hand. I think it's crazy. Oh, wow. 
um I'm, I'm very i'm very hyped to start working on it soon very cool if you're gonna do a fun like a crowdfunding thing you know definitely come oh, on here and yeah, we'll, love to have, yeah, we'll help you promote it. it like crazy yeah. absolutely that, yeah. would, that would be awesome yeah all right did so, you uh, well on. real quick um uh, staying with the filmmaker aspect um when you started your youtube channel did did you want to go into filmmaking did that cross your mind or is that just something that just happened or have you always wanted to be a filmmaker i've always wanted to be a filmmaker it's been like my my pipe dream you know what okay. i mean it's like i would love to do this i have no idea how to get into it though you know i wasn't um i, I, I didn't I think like you just did with your with your stab <laughs> yeah you know I, I you do you know you are yeah. a filmmaker now yeah. right? it's not yeah. a dream anymore you you and steven spielberg technically have the same job <laughs> yes yes don't inflate my ego too much yeah. man no, oh my god it, man. <laughs> but yeah but by and and i hate to say by default but really you know because i it's and i i i realize i love to talk maybe i don't love to talk but there's rabbit holes that i get into but but being a filmmaker i don't think you necessarily you know, unless you really set out to go, I'm not going to do anything else but filmmaking. You just kind of fall into it once you start doing anything media wise. And 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 really, because you did do your movie and you, because you do your channel, because anytime you you shoot and you edit, you know, people look at that as content creation. It is. But it's really a filmmaking because now you're making decisions when you're in the editing process. And now, by default, you've become a filmmaker where where whether somebody wants to say it or not, no, I'm more content. Go, OK, great. But, you know, I mean, you are really a filmmaker. So welcome. <laughs> thank you, man. Thank thank you so much. Freaks, I... one of us. One of, <laughs> right, right. One of us. It... <laughs> I, I think, yeah, the, the thing about it that I was so terrified of is I just I just had that fear. I had that fear of I have no idea, like, mm -hmm. like, what am I going to do? You know, is this is this going to work? Are people going to watch this and respond to it? And I think that's what kept me back for such a long time. But uh -huh. then you meet other people who make films, you know what I mean? You're making other people you, you meet other people like I, I met so many people who worked on Red Right Hand during the process, you know, during the, the working on it. I'm like, we need a DP, you know, we need a we, we need a, we need people to work on that. We need uh, all these people, actors, whatever and you meet all these people who are just doing it you know what i mean yeah. and then it's like oh you know that's how anybody starts is just yeah. just making something just getting a camera running out in the woods and filming something that's how yeah. anybody any big director has started it's yeah. the same thing uh you, you just have to keep building on that it's it's the same it's the youtube principle all over again you know you have to just keep going at it <laughs> just yeah. keep doing it and then yeah. you'll get bigger and bigger with every project Man, you know, that's you look at Robert by. Rodriguez selling yeah. his body to medical science to make El Mariachi. Have you read Rebel Without a Crew? I have not, no. Dude, you got to read it. It's uh, his diary about making El Mariachi, his first movie, and how he was in a medical thing for a month, letting them do experiments on him to get the $7,000 to make that movie. Oh, it's my God. It's incredible. You got to check it out. You can, you can get it dirt cheap on ebay man for like maybe five bucks but it'll change your life yeah oh i would i, I would be very interested in reading that i i love robert rodriguez so just to know any yeah. any more about him would be very fascinating so i know that i've always wanted to ask this you've got the universal monsters on your wall are you a fan of those also Big time. I love a lot of the Universal Monster movies. It's it's where you get a lot of the things that I feel like, especially the 80s touched on, that is just such yeah. a... Uh, there's a there's a certain vibe to those movies that i feel like the 80s expanded upon the 50s did too you know what i mean the like just the like monsters showcasing effects and all that it's uh there's something wonderful and magical about that to me and i that's I, especially why i love uh creature from the black lagoon i was about to talk yeah. to you about that i just got the blu-ray and i gotta say man i wish they would put some respect on the creature's name because there's so little with him. The last time we saw him in a movie technically was the Monster Squad. <laughs> right. It, it's a shame. It's a sh I think the creature is uh it, it's he's iconic, he's scary. Uh, I love the the soundtrack on that yeah. on that movie too. 
I don't know. There's there's a I can't believe a remake hasn't happened yet. Yeah. There's there's YouTube videos about all the chances. Like in the 80s, John Carpenter almost did it. Oh man. Yeah. Dude. It's like <laughs> man. But again, it's the easiest one to remake. Yeah, you kind of do whatever you want with it. You know what I mean? It's not like the story's not concrete or anything, you know? Like when I heard that the Radio Silence was doing a universal monster, I was like, oh my God, they got to do Creature. They've got to do Creature. But I think it's Dracula's daughter is the one they're doing, right? Yeah, and I'm like, I'm still kind of excited for that. I oh, so am I. You know, but I, I do agree if anything needs a remake right now, it is Creature from the Black Lagoon, like more than any of the Universal Monsters, in my opinion. And everyone has owned the rights to it. I think Scarlett Johansson owns the rights to it right now. Really? Her and <laughs> Captain wow. America. Chris, Chris Evans. Yeah, we're supposed to be doing it, then it stopped. And there was the whole dark universe thing, which is the funniest thing to ever happen in movies. <laughs> yeah, that's a that was a I don't know. I don't even know what they were thinking with that. Trying to start an MCU with all the classic monsters. Yeah, it's like, it's like come on. I mean, and the the classic monsters was the first MCU, the first connected right. universe when you watch those movies. It, it, it was, but it wasn't done in the same way as what Marvel's done. You know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like, oh, here's an appearance of another monster from one of the other movies that you've probably seen all from the same company, it, it, opposed yeah. to telling this gigantic, huge story. You know that I just don't think that works with uh, all, all the, you know, goofy monsters and stuff. It, it's it's a different vibe. You know, it's you, you shouldn't take it as seriously as something like. Uh, well, not that superhero movies are to be taken super seriously, but yeah. it's still more serious. It's more dramatic opposed to, you know, old school universal monsters. Yeah. And I mean, I the Abbott and Costello ones, I think, are the best because when they're Abbott and Costello movies, they're the funniest Abbott and Costello movies. <laughs> then when the monsters show up, they're scary monster movies. It's great. It's It's a great balance. You know, it's <laughs> it's crazy stuff, man. Yeah, well, I, one thing before we go, dude, when I saw Scream 6, I first thought, are they ripping off Red Right Hand? Are we <laughs> going to see it from the killer's perspective? But another thought I had, and I wanted to know your thought about this, when Ghostface was about to reveal himself and there was that quiet, I was waiting for him to go, what's my line? And then we would pull out and see, oh, this is actually Stab 9 or whatever they'd be up to. Were you I, waiting? What were your thoughts on what that scene? I was definitely thinking, like, this can't just be it. You know what I mean? It can't just be Samara Weaving dies in the opening scene. That's it. You know what I mean? It's like, come on, there's got to be a little more to that. But it hangs on him for a while. You know, you are you're left in that suspense of like, where's the title card? You know, where is where, yeah. where when's it coming? And then he just takes off the mask. I I was sitting next to Matt, who once again he's the he co-wrote the movie with me, co-directed it with me, and we just lost our minds like we were five years old again. <laughs> we were just like, oh my, they're doing it, they're doing it, man. They're, I was just like, I was I was practically hitting him, like I was practically hitting him in the face. I was so excited. I, I to me, it was just like this is something I've been thinking about since I've seen since I saw Scream Four for the first time. Like I that was my first Scream movie. Like I saw that all the way okay. back when it came out. I remember being everyone was hyped about it. Saw that one and I just was obsessed with uh, Jill and her motive. And like, I just yeah. thought she was the scariest killer in the franchise. I thought that was awesome. And I wanted, I just, my, the thought that kept bouncing around my brain is like, what was it like? You know, what was it like for her? Like, what was the planning? You know, how did they decide like, oh, Charlie kills Olivia it, it, during this sequence? Yeah. You know, what was that? I, I just, <laughs> I had to know. And to finally get a taste of that in the actual movies was I don't even know how to explain it. Like, it was just like waiting your whole life for something and you finally get, you finally get it after 20 some years, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I gotta say it, it's my favorite franchise. I can't pick a, a, I can't rank them. You know, one is my favorite because I was a 16 when it came out and it was the first time I saw myself in a movie, you know, Randy, it's like, my God, it's everything I like this guy is saying. And I want to know your thoughts on this. I feel that the slasher movie 
is the film that defines a generation of horror fans because it's a dead teenager movie. What are your <laughs> thoughts on that? I think that's a great point. I, I look at movies like Scream, Halloween, and you know Friday the 13th and all that, and y you can criticize them for their simplicity, but I, I, I've fallen in love with that. I have this this bliss when you when you watch a movie like that. And there's so many different ways to spin it. You know, it's it's a tale that's been told a million times, but even even that, even with all of that, you know, you have slasher movies going all the way back to like, you know, Psycho. Psycho's a slasher movie, technically, yeah, you know? In, in my film school, they told us that my history of film teacher said this is the first slasher movie. He didn't count mm -hmm. Peeping Tom, but he said, you know, S S um, Psycho is the first one. Right. And you you can have the you have those stories dating all the way back then. But yet we're still releasing slasher movies today here in 2023. I that's that that says something. You know what I mean? Not only is it can it not only can it be the voice of a generation, but it's like it's almost like the best format to tell horror because there's so it's so simple, yet you can throw so many different ver uh, things at it like X from last year is is a very complex slasher movie. It is at at its core just a bunch of old people killing <laughs> young, young porn people. stars, you know. Yeah. But it also has a bunch of like context to it. There's a bunch of commentary on the seasons of life, which I think is so fascinating. There there's a lot more you can throw more at it. There's there, there's you can throw more meat and fat on that if you wanted to. It's it, the skeleton it's a skeleton essentially. The the slasher idea, the format, whatever. And we'll keep making movies like that forever. But to your point about Scream, like being able to see yourself in a horror movie finally, like we we still have that today, I would argue. Yeah. Terrifier 2, however, however you guys feel about it, I think just absolutely like captured the minds and, and hearts and wonder of our of our generation last year by just doing something so not safe. In a, in a world of very popular, safe movies. That's not to say that they're bad. It's just there's not too many movies that are breaking boundaries, that are being transgressive and testing the the social norm and all that. Terrifier 2 said, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I think that that speaks volumes for what audiences want to see but may not realize that that is what they want from, from movies nowadays. I personally wasn't too fond of Terrifier 2, but I love the fact that it exists because of everything you said, you know, this was made for pretty much nothing, you know, and it got theatrical distribution and made a lot of noise. And that's really cool. But to me, it went too, it went too far in some parts, like the main kill that everybody talks about that just messed me up. I felt bad after watching it. Like I need to get some holy water, <laughs> rub it in my eyes and then do an exorcism on myself because something bad's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, that is that that's what they were going for, though. Exactly. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I think whether you like that or not, it's definitely something to be like, wow, they they really did that. You, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. I can't believe that actually that actually exists. That's a movie that played in theaters for millions of people. Yeah, it's, and again, you know, like we said, horror is in this great renaissance right now where everything is happening all at once. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I am a huge Blumhouse fan. Anything they put out, I'll see it. And it's cool that their snobby cousin who went to an Ivy League school, A24, can exist <laughs> at the same moment. And then, you know, the angry little brother, which is the, terrifier crowd can all exist and be at one and you could like all three of those you know or you can just like this side and there's no judgment at all in any of that because we're all horror fans you know what i mean yeah. we're all everyone no matter what your whatever your preferred flavor is it doesn't even matter it's you're at the end of the day you're all a horror everyone's a horror fan if you love scream i know what you did last summer that's really the only thing you like you're a horror fan if you like terrifier and hellraiser and all these bloody gory movies you're a horror fan everyone is united in that 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 same area even though we all find different things about these movies uh more attractive than other things and you know what? I think that's the perfect way to end the show. Jake, it was an absolute thrill to have you on. Um, definitely check out his channel. All of his links will be in the description when this goes up. And 
I'm going to tag him in everything that goes up on the, on my Instagram. But yeah, Jake, thank you so much for coming on. Um, Everybody, like we say each and every week, remember, support our troops.